The South African Medical Research Council has been awarded a multi-million rand grant to develop and test HIV vaccines in Africa. This was after a successful application led by Council President and CEO Professor Glenda Gray, along with other leading scientists from across the African continent. Now, it is estimated that there were 1.3 million infections in the year 2022, and these are global numbers uh, that we are referring to, with women and girls accounting for 50 percent of those infected but for greater detail on both the grant and the state of hiv uh, vaccines let's talk to professor grenda glay who joins us from cape town a very good morning to you prof good to have you with us and, and i guess congratulations are in order for the awarding of this humongous sum of 867 million rand that is going to go towards the vaccine I guess it sounds like a lot of money, but being in the profession and in the industry, how sizable is it? Is it enough for you to perhaps put some good time and work into this? Well, it is substantial, and it's the first biggest. It's the biggest grant that's ever been given to a an African uh, um, institution to do HIV vaccine research. So we're delighted about this, and this this vac this money will allow us to do some HIV discovery work, as well as f select the right platform to deliver our vaccine and test it in um, preclinical and in in um, first in human or first in African studies. So this is a substantial grant for us, and I think it's a first step in us in uh, enabling us to um, work with our scientists on the continent to find an HIV vaccine. So we are delighted about this and we think that this is um, a, a first step forward and um, usually uh, we are the recipients of, of vaccines and this allows us to actually be in the front, in the driving seat, so to speak, to make HIV vaccines. So it's a very exciting process. As mentioned, this is a, a continental um, a approach to the vaccine development. Who are the other partners on the continent that you will be partnering with? So we'll be partnering with scientists from Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and South Africa. So it's a very big program, and we have the best, the, the brains trust of, of people on this continent to help us work to, to put together this program. So we're very excited. Hopefully, we'll be able to upscale laboratory infrastructure, do tech transfer, as well as conduct clinical trials across the continent. What do you hope will be, I guess, the main functions as well as the main impacts and differentiators between the current treatment that's available for HIV with the vaccine that is yet to be developed? So the only way you can eradicate or eliminate a, a, an epidemic or a pandemic is with a vaccine. And so although we have very good uh, um, prevention methods in our toolbox, like condoms, circumcision, oral PrEP, um, a long-acting antiretrovirals, uh, we know that the only way you can really turn off an epidemic is with a vaccine. And so vaccine is going to be a very critical component to our, our portfolio to try and put an end to HIV on our continent and, a, and at a global level. This has been a, a decades, multi-decade long um, you know, process of trying to find a vaccine. I wonder what have been uh, the takeouts and the main lessons that have been learned. I'm, I'm looking here, there was OAMBO, which was the HVTN702 uh, trial, vaccine trial that was stopped in fe February of 2020. There's the one that was titled in Bogoto, which was stopped in 2021. There's Mosaico, which was stopped you know, this year in 2023. All of them that found to be safe in, in in some parts, but not effective against HIV. What are the lessons that you're going to be taking from those previous studies into this new one? Those are critical lessons, and I, w I led most of those studies that didn't work. Um, what it did show us is that HIV still is a very tricky virus, and we still don't know what the correlates of protection are. And so um, we will use all that, that data from those three trials to try and understand um, the human immune re uh, response to an, a vaccine and try and understand were there any participants in those in those trials that showed protection. 
and try and understand the interaction between a, a um, in, between an immunogen like the HIV vaccine um, and our host immune response and which people were protected. And in those subgroups of people that were protected, we were trying to understand what was the immune response so that we can do reverse engineering um, for an HIV vaccine. So these are all critical studies and um, it tells us that um, we still don't understand the 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 the, the correlates of protection or what we have to do to protect humans against HIV. And we will hopefully use all those lessons to try and engineer a vaccine that can work um, and um, will, and our, uh, our immune response will respond to it so that we can protect against HIV. So those are important studies and every step we do and every vaccine trial we do helps us find a, a solution for the future. HIV is the trickiest virus that we have to try and and um, combat. And to date, um, we still don't know at a global level uh, what will protect, what kind of vaccine we need to protect against HIV. Professor, you were also very much in the forefront when it came to um, the, the COVID-19 uh, vaccine and, and the pandemic. And if you could help me understand this, I mean, it's been 40 years since HIV was identified as the cause behind, um, you, you know, AIDS. 36 years since the first HIV vaccine trial. And yet we still don't have a vaccine for HIV. But when we look at COVID in two years, if that, already there was a vaccine um, that was being made pretty much mandatory around the world. How does one make sense of that? Okay, so first of all, uh, the, the coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2 is a very easy virus to make a vaccine against. And um, people, you know, so we don't, people, no one today has ever been cured of an, of an HIV, vac, of a HIV virus that um, we know of. So first of all, we, we don't know what it takes to, to cure someone from HIV. The, the virus that, the HIV virus, com, you know, continues to replicate in a, every minute that's in our body. Um, we don't have good animal mod models and we still don't know what it takes to um, protect someone. So, so SARS-CoV-2 was a pretty easy virus to, uh, to crack, uh, whereas HIV um, is not that easy. And that's why after 40 years, we still don't know how to make an, a vaccine. And so it's gonna take a, a lot of uh, brains trust, a lot of people um, who who have to work together to try and uh, make an HIV vaccine. This is a start. It's, it's saying, okay, um, people in, in Africa understand this virus. They are great scientists in, in Africa. Let's see if we can use our brains trust to try uh, move the field forward, inch it forward to try and find some solutions. Professor Glenda Gray, thank you so much uh, for your time. She is from the South African Medical Research Council on the 867 million rand that ha has been granted to them by USAID along with other partners on the African continent to continue the search for a vaccine against HIV.